Hey guys, welcome to What Just Happened. This is a new playlist I'm going to do here on YouTube where I reflect on the plot, the literary techniques, and the themes from the works that we are reading in class. So last week in American Lit, we finished watching Streetcar Named Desire. This is Tennessee Williams' famous 1947 play. It was made even more famous by the 1951 um, film production of the same name starring Marlon Brando and Vivian Leigh. This is the very film that we watched in class. Now, from the outset of the novels, readers and viewers witness a contrast between Blanche Dubois and Stanley Kowalski, the husband of her sister, Stella. From a literary sense, we can see that Blanche and Stanley are opposites, or what we call foils, uh, from the outset of the story. Stanley and Stella's unromantic and brash home lifestyle, accompanied by a lot of unapologetic drinking, cursing, and these tight living quarters make Blanche very uncomfortable. And likewise, Blanche's thoughtfulness, imagination, and her manners threaten Stanley's sense of fun and bothers his sense of brutal honesty. Stella, in the meantime, is caught right smack in the middle. I do want to take a minute here to talk about the often overlooked Stella Dubois. Um, also, Stella Kowalski, played gracefully by Kim Hunter in the 1951 film pictured here. Stella is obviously torn between a familial love of her sister and her blatant desire for her husband, Stanley. So symbolically, if you look further into her name, you'll find that the word Stella is actually Latin for star. So stuck between the earthy grime of her husband and the lofty galaxy or atmosphere of her sister's otherworldly imagination. This is the perfect name for a character who is torn between the realms of reality and fantasy. Naming this character a star is no coincidence by Williams. During the course of the play, he's asking us, do we consider a star to be a part of the earth or do we consider a star to be a part of the heavens? So as the play moves forward, Stella discovers more Stanley discovers more truth behind the veil that Blanche has drawn around herself and tensions rise. He learns that Blanche was fired from a teaching job for an inappropriate relationship with a student, then evicted from her home, and then caught soliciting herself as a prostitute at a local hotel. For all the curtains that Blanche has drawn around herself, she certainly has a lot to hide, but Stanley is no angel either. So when Stella is in the hospital giving birth to her child, he's overcome by his anger at Blanche, and in a scene of violent suggestion in the film, he rapes her. An already unstable Blanche is then psychologically sent into the stratosphere and seems to lose her sense of reality completely. The play closes with Blanche being dismissively taken to an asylum, but viewers are given hints that Stella knows something is up as she is last seen gathering her baby and ascending the steps away from the ground floor occupied by her dirty husband. You see what I did there? So while violent and brash, this play has garnered a lot of praise because it asks viewers the same question that it asks Stella. What realm do we choose to occupy in our lives? Would we rather live a pretty and imaginative life filled with lies, or an honest life that also lacks empathy and creativity. Not to mention the many other themes in the play, including the prominent role that youth and mortality play in our character's fears, especially the character of Blanche Dubois. Thanks for joining me on this new series, and I hope you guys have a great week. Take care, and see you soon.